Hey everyone, this is Nick, and chances are if you use Linux as your desktop, you probably like the ideas of free and open source software, openness, exchanging of ideas, user contributions, and all of that stuff. And if you're not currently using Linux, chances are that there's a specific proprietary app that you depend on, which isn't available. So today I'd like to talk about proprietary software on Linux. Should we push for more proprietary commercial apps to bring in more users, or should we try and keep the system pure, free and open source? Let's discuss right after I tell you everything about today's sponsor, which is definitely in the open source camp. This video is sponsored by Tuxcare and Alma Linux. Alma Linux is an open source enterprise Linux distribution, which is completely binary compatible with Red Hat Enterprise Linux and CentOS pre CentOS 3. It's owned and governed by the community and it's supported financially by Cloud Linux and other sponsors. While you can use Alma Linux for free on your servers or desktops, Tuxcare offers a range of services around it to ensure that you get live patching without any reboots or downtime, as well as 24-7, 365 support so you can manage your fleet without any stress. So, click the link in the description below to learn more about Alma Linux and Tuxcare support options. So, let's begin with a quick tour of the state of proprietary software on Linux. Modern Linux desktops can use proprietary software. NVIDIA drivers are the prime example. For now, there are no viable, full-featured open source drivers for NVIDIA GPUs. This might change in the future, but for now, if you're team green, you're using proprietary drivers. Depending on your hardware, you might also use more proprietary blobs that enable your Wi-Fi or Bluetooth to work. These things are crucial to ensure that certain components run well, to the point where even Debian, a distro that historically has always refused to include any proprietary stuff on their ISO installer, even they have decided to allow these proprietary firmware bits to be included by default, so the experience is better out of the box for everyone. And that's just what needed for hardware support. Chances are you're also using proprietary applications. And websites, like yeah, most websites are proprietary. If you're a Chrome user, you're using proprietary software. Chrome is built on an open foundation, Chromium, but they do add some non-open code, like codecs for certain file playback. Vivaldi isn't open source either, neither is Microsoft Edge or Opera. If you're a gamer, chances are you're also using proprietary platforms like Steam, the Epic Game Store, Ubisoft Connect, Origin, and most if not all of the games available there are proprietary. Your bootloader is probably not open source. If you use RAR to unzip RAR files, if you use Spotify, Mega or Dropbox, Bitwig, Maya, DaVinci Resolve, and a ton of others, you're using proprietary software on Linux. So yeah, Linux might be free software and so are our desktop environments and most of our applications, but chances are you're not running a completely free and open source system. Unless you're Richard Stallman, but this guy also eats stuff off of his foot, so... Okay, now I even regret talking about it. There, there's a link in the description. You should not watch it, but if you don't believe me, check it out. Now, personally, I use DaVinci Resolve to edit videos with NVIDIA drivers. I game through Steam and other platforms, and I play proprietary games, and I'm okay with that. It makes my computer work as I want to, and I can do what I want to with it. It doesn't mean I wouldn't prefer using exclusively free and open source software, but for my needs, it's just not doable. And the real question is, since the most used applications in the world are mostly proprietary, should we try and push to get them all on Linux, or should we not want them and encourage their free and open source software alternatives? So let's begin with the reasons you might want more commercial proprietary applications. And these probably all boil down to, I need these apps to use Linux as a daily driver. The applications people generally clamor for are Microsoft Office, the Adobe Suite, CAD software like AutoCAD, a lot of games, although Proton has kind of solved that problem, at least for the most part. Streaming software, OCR software, voice synthesizers, plenty of VFX related software, this type of stuff. Generally things that you would need to use Linux professionally in certain fields. 
We have tons of alternatives for most if not all of these applications, and they're probably more than good enough for the enthusiast, the one that's learning or someone who wants to use them for fun. But for a professional whose livelihood depends on the software and the tool they picked, with years and years of older files and projects, that does not do the trick. The lazy bastards! What's a complete change of hardware or muscle memory and habit and retraining of employees? They're not even trying. Now this is the main reason. It's a make or break thing for a lot of professionals, for them personally to be able to move to Linux. And by extension, it's also a problem for people who would like Linux to have more users. Even if you don't need these apps yourself, you might want Linux to have access to them just so that more people would hop onto the Linux train. We could also say that using proprietary apps could lure users to Linux, where they would realize the advantage of using free and open source software and get them to use this type of application slowly over time, replacing their proprietary apps with FOSS applications. I personally don't subscribe to that last idea because I think that if your favorite application is available, you're not going to try and relearn something else just because you could. Like the real barriers to switching workflows are still there, even if you moved from Windows to Linux. But what I agree on, and I'm basically agreeing with myself there, which is probably pretty sane, what I agree on is that Linux does benefit from having more users. Getting more users is the only way we will all get a better experience all around. Not only because having more users means potentially finally getting these AAA commercial apps like Microsoft Office or the Adobe Suite, but also because the more users you have, the more chance you have of them becoming contributors. Whether they'll contribute code or ideas or designs or marketing or just tell people around them about the stuff they like on Linux and the fast apps they use, it's always great to have more people involved in open source. Open source is a game of scale. The more contributions you have, the more chances you have of making each project better or fork a project that's dying or just create something that is still missing on Linux. And more users means more feedback, more potential contributions, more potential funding, and that's always good. Of course, whether we need commercial proprietary apps to draw more users to Linux is the question I don't have the answer to. Especially since if we get more users through these proprietary apps, I'm not sure that these new users would actually be interested in contributing to alternatives to the software they actually use. Maybe we should have more hardware available in stores to get more people. Maybe that won't work if we don't have the major apps people are used to. What I'm certain of is that we need more users if we want to progress faster and be a more appealing target for developers and stores to push Linux forward. The Steam Deck is the perfect example. Since it launched, a ton of developers have optimized their games to run better on Linux or to run better with Proton. They've enabled anti-cheat support. Basically, having a Linux gaming platform made Linux gaming better. Now, let's look at the reasons to keep Linux desktops as free and open source as possible. First, we have amazing applications that are free of charge and free software. Krita is a wonderful drawing and digital painting app, pretty much the standard these days. Blender is an awesome 3D modeling tool and can also do video editing. GIMP, as much as people like to mock it, is an excellent alternative to Photoshop for people who are okay with learning a new way of doing things or who have never used Photoshop and don't want to pay. LibreOffice is a full-featured alternative to Microsoft Office that most regular users could switch to without losing anything in the process. These are only a few examples, but there are plenty more. And we could argue that if we want these applications to thrive and to get more development and funding, then we need to have only these alternatives available and not their proprietary counterparts. Some kind of throw the baby in the pool to see if it can learn to swim sort of thing. What this boils down to is people don't like to change their habits. And if we want the FOSS ecosystem to develop and grow and improve, we need to make sure that people who move to Linux use these applications and not the ones they're already familiar with, because that would mean a big reason for contributing or using these FOSS apps would disappear. And I can get behind this reason. If DaVinci Resolve was not on Linux, I would probably still be using Kdenlive 
and since I would never have used DaVinci Resolve, I wouldn't know what I was missing, and I would just notice the stuff that it could do better, and have encouraged the devs to fix that. There's also the philosophical aspects. If you love free and open source software, you want these ideas to spread. Linux as a desktop might be your nice enclave, your escape from a world controlled by huge companies. Having their offerings on Linux might end up tainting this enclave and making it worse by encouraging the commercial practices of these companies and erasing the mentality that many Linux users like. Some push that reasoning to the extreme and think that if we bring commercial proprietary apps to Linux, then Linux itself will become commercial and proprietary and the false alternatives will disappear. I don't agree with that. I think a lot of contributors to free and open source alternatives to big proprietary apps do so because they specifically want a false alternative to these apps. And so they would keep developing them even though the proprietary app would be available on Linux. Wherever you stand on this, we always go back to the chicken and egg problem with underdog systems and alternative systems. If you don't have users, you don't have applications from big developers and your alternatives also don't get better fast enough. If you don't have these applications or these really high quality alternatives that have all the same features as the competitors in the same time frame, then you don't have more users. This isn't always true as proven by certain services lately like Mastodon. It was really small, but a lot of people gave it a shot despite the already huge alternative, Twitter, still existing for now. But for Linux, it's definitely a thing. Our small market share on the desktop means that stores don't sell hardware with Linux on it. Developers rarely make Linux versions of their apps. And so we don't get that many more users and the cycle repeats. And again, I'm not saying that Linux cannot grow without commercial proprietary applications, but it's probably more difficult. And also, I don't think Linux needs to beat Windows or macOS in terms of market share. Some people think Linux should remain as small as possible to stay pure, niche, and to keep the spirit of having to work to get your perfect system. I don't think this is the right mentality, but I also don't think that Linux needs to be the number one OS on the desktop in terms of market share. Honestly, where I'd like it to be is at around the same market share as macOS, enough to be a viable alternative for developers to be interested in, for games to be ported, for Linux hardware to be sold in stores, that would be enough. And it would also be enough for AAA commercial proprietary apps to be ported to Linux as well, which means that Linux would be viable for a lot of professionals, which it isn't really right now. So either you think proprietary apps are necessary to have more market share, more users, and for everyone to be able to use Linux as a desktop, or you think proprietary apps will taint Linux and damage our existing fast applications. You might think Linux needs more users or that it doesn't. And in both cases, you might be right. I don't know. Personally, I'm in the camp of use whatever works, which means I have a preference for FOSS applications and FOSS systems. But if there's no alternative that works for me, then I will definitely use the proprietary app that lets me do what I want to do. If you're not in the same camp, that's perfectly okay too. That's the beauty of the Linux desktop. Whether it gets proprietary apps or not, it will still be a viable option for us who already use it. Because with FOSS, if anything starts threatening the ideals of a project, it quickly gets forked. And so everyone gets to have their cake and eat it too. And everyone can have a nice Linux device, thanks to today's sponsor. Tuxedo is a German company that ships Linux desktops and laptops worldwide. Why you would want to use that instead of a generic device made to run Windows? Well, it's because it removes all the guesswork. You know when you buy from Tuxedo that everything will run. You can pick from a selection of popular distros at install, or you can just slap your own and you know that the hardware has been selected because it supports Linux. And if there are a few tweaks needed here and there, they have repos and packages to allow everything to run perfectly. They have a nice big choice of devices for every price point and every need. And all devices are very customizable with various CPUs, GPUs, SSDs, your logo on the lid, your own custom keyboard layout engraved, laser etched on the keys. Their devices are really good. So if you need a new laptop or a new desktop and you want to support Linux development and you want to make sure that Linux runs well on it, check out the link in the description below and get yourself a tuxedo device. They're really, really good.
So, thanks everyone for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't like it, well, click the dislike button and tell me why in the comments as well. And if you really enjoy the channel, there are plenty of links down there to follow me on Twitter, Mastodon, PixelFed, PeerTube, Instagram, whatever you like. And you can also support the channel with the super thanks button, with the PayPal link in the description, or the link to my Patreon page and YouTube members page. Both of them get access to a weekly podcast where I talk about Linux, tech, open source, the channel, my personal life, everything. And you also get to vote on the next topic that I'll cover for the next month. So thanks everyone for watching, and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.